Hey everybody, uh, if any of you are watching this, uh, I hope so. If not, then you know maybe you can watch it later on YouTube, but we're live now, so if I screw up, then you know it's it's going down. Um, I'm Chris Clow, and what you have arrived at is Comics on Consoles. This is a monthly two-part uh, project that I've been de I've decided to undertake that uh, looks at the intersection between comic books, you know, oh, maybe we're back now. Okay. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying here, and I'm, I'm not sure how well it's, uh, how well it's gonna go. But anyway, so let me try and explain now that I think back. Uh, so Comics on Consoles, two parts every month. It's going to be this a, a broadcast right here and a podcast. And the podcast in this case has already been released. I didn't want to wait. So uh, the subject game of the month is, of course, Batman Begins. And I'll be playing in the broadcast portion uh, two what I feel are representative levels of the game. So uh, they're... I, I really do feel like this game is kind of a uh, kind of a gem when it comes to Batman games because it seems like right now, especially with younger fans, uh, that they have a perception that no good Batman games existed before 2009, and that's just not true. And one of the first ways I want to delve into that is with Batman Begins. So let's go ahead and get started, uh, and hopefully this is going to be. And again, we've got some technical difficulties here. All right, let me try and uh, let me try and fix this so that you can actually see what I'm uh, trying to do. And uh, okay, so we got Axio Game Cat HD. Wow. So it just does not want to cooperate today, it seems. Of course, you know, I think I, I, I thought I had this all well and set up well before I, uh, I even did this, but okay, now it seems to be working. So let me stretch that down and put it... There we go. Okay, now let's see if we can play some video games. Sorry about this, uh, but like I said, you know, being live it's going to happen. So Batman Begins was released by Electronic Arts and developed by Europe in 2005. And uh, the level that I'm going to play first is close to the end of the game. Um, it's, in fact, I think it's the second to last part that you are actually in the Batman costume. So let's go ahead and go to Arkham Asylum. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to pick this level as well was because Arkham Asylum, the, the video game that would follow four years after this one, is uh, considered to be the beginning of probably the most definitive hey, game series ever. So here, I'll just off off this run. Focus their paranoia on an external tormentor. In this case, a scarecrow. Rachel's inside Arkham Asylum. Trying to tie Dr. Crane to Falcone. I have to protect her. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, 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 I can see the chat nice. line too, so if anybody does so come in here and to wants to say something, feel free. So, as you can see, just rolling up right here, Arkham Asylum, and it's gonna, the, the car is gonna come around. It looks beautiful, it looks exactly like it did in the movie. Uh, and that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's really great, especially, you know, in 2005, this was all new. And that's one of the things that some people surprisingly don't take into account. Alfred, oh, so you I can hear uh, some of Christian side. Bale's vocal work. Oh gosh, he yes. is the primary yeah, voice of Batman in this game. Cute. But let me go up here for I a second. And stealth is a big part of this, so as you can see in the bottom uh, left, or maybe you can, I'm, I'm not sure, but in the bottom left hand corner is a splinter cell style radar that indicates that I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six armed foes 
and uh, they are ready to shoot me if I show myself. But really, I mean, let's take a look at this, because Gotham City in this game, you have to remember this is a sixth generation console game. And Gotham City actually looks pretty spectacular, all things considered. I mean, it's, it's very much taken from the film that it's based on. And uh, so you can see Arkham Asylum over here, also very representative of how it appeared in the film. But let's jump up here, and we'll, we'll go through the entire Arkham level. But one of the reasons, again, that I picked this was because Arkham Asylum, the game from 2009... Uh, is so well regarded, this level actually looks quite a bit like the Arkham Asylum game. And of course you can also do some gliding here, but stealth and sneaking around, I mean this was really one of the very first Batman video game experiences where this was an important element to your success. And Sean Gerber and I talk about this in the podcast quite a bit. But it's, it's pretty great, and of course, so coming in here, there's a couple of armed thugs, and we sneak up and do silent takedowns. And something else that would follow in Arkham Asylum. And that's pretty unique in comparison uh, to other Batman games before Arkham Asylum came out. So let's go up here. And one thing I will say about this game as is, is a quasi-negative, even though it doesn't really matter all that much, is that Batman looks kind of like a monkey when he climbs things, as you can see. But, you know, it is what it is. So we'll sneak down here. And so... Oh, so one of the things that you can see... I'll go out of stealth mode here for a second. When you walk around... On the radar, there's a little circle that appears if I just walk regular. Or regularly. And that means that, well, we, you're going to make a little bit of noise. So you want to try and be very quiet. And sneak back here. And the vocal performances in this game, I really do feel, are, are pretty good. Um, you know, of course you have several of the primary cast members contributing to this. But, I mean, even in just these, uh, these supporting sections here, you can see, uh, or you can hear, rather, that they're not exactly phoning it in. I mean, in fact, in some cases, the supporting vocal performances here might be a little less campy than even some of the performances in the... Uh, in the Arkham games. So let's get these guys' attention. So as you can see, um, right now, in the top right-hand corner, there's a little flashing bat symbol, and uh, the, the, the car is lit up as a target, and that means that I can throw a batarang and uh, have the alarm go off. So my reputation is increased, and there's a fear meter that's in the bottom right hand corner and uh, that means that I'm gonna have a little bit of an easier time fighting these guys so we'll take out the guy with the gun first as is pretty customary and now we get into some of the combat uh, it's very simplistic in comparison to the Arkham games but in, you can see the little red uh, bats on the on the ground will, um, when I was fighting him, and that actually symbolizes that if there are multiple enemies, I can attack whichever ones I want to. So you can engage multiple foes, and again, that was kind of an innovation that this game made in regards to Batman films. So there's a clue right here. So you, there is a, a, a slight detective element to Batman Begins as well. I mean, it's very linear in the way that it's laid out, but uh, there's a phone here, and we can listen to some messages, so let's go ahead and do that. sense of your message, but if you think you're in danger, then get out of there. Seriously, call me. This is a message for Dr. Thomas from Arkham HR. Your concerns about another doctor's experiments really are in our jurisdiction. We've passed them along to internal review. But we're happy to update your security code. Your new digits are 4563. Make sure you've erased this message once you've noted the code. Alright, so uh, you can hear that there's a little bit of story that's being divulged in the game. Let's see. So let's 
four, five, eight, three. No. Four, five, six, three. Okay. I'm keeping the volume down a little bit uh, so that I can try and have a little bit of a smoother experience here. So there is a slight detective element. I mean, you have to interact with some parts of the environment. You have to try and cultivate some clues if you want to pass uh, certain obstacles. And so one of the other interesting things that you didn't need by the time the Arkham games arrived, but you can put an optic cable under the door so you can sort of see what a room is like before you actually go into it. Kind of a nice touch. Unnecessary by the time of Arkham Asylum because they created detective vision. But uh, still, so we got some Arkham inmates. And again, you know, look at the ambiance here. Look at the set design. Uh, very representative of what the movie looked like, but also just kind of creepy. I mean, if you're playing this at night, so, I mean, go back to 2005. Video games didn't look like this all that much, and this is a movie tie-in game. But uh, the ambiance here is actually surprisingly creepy, especially if you're, you know, if you're playing this at the height of this console generation. Uh, in the dark, it might actually be a little bit scary. So let's go around here. So we have some armed thugs. Alfred, I've got in a this security room. gate in my way. Yes, sir. Asylum plans show a more than adequate lockdown system in place. Can they be opened remotely? I'm afraid not, sir. You'll have to find some other way around. And who did you just hear? You heard Michael Caine in a video game. How many video games has Sir Michael Caine done? The answer is one, and you're looking at it right now. So it's something that's pretty cool. So it looks like that guy's sort of out of the line of sight, and there's some crazy inmates down there. So let's see if we can cause a little bit of trouble. Let's monkey our way up the ladder there, and try and sneak into the security room. One operator, and let's take him out. Silent takedown. And let's cause some trouble. Oh, gotta hack it first. So the cryptographic sequencer's forerunner was the electro hack tool in Batman Begins, but it's a, I mean it's a lot more simplistic than, uh, than the cryptographic stuff or the uh, the remote hacking device from Arkham Knight. And let's see what happens. And again, look how creepy this is. Just a movie tie-in game that's actually doing a pretty decent amount of justice to uh, to the overall creepiness of Arkham Asylum. Even though we didn't get to see very much of it in the movie, it's a pretty prime environment here in the game, and there's even more context granted. So let's go into this fight here. So as you can see, I'm taking on two guys at once. And after a certain amount of time, you can do a finishing move. Sometimes they don't always connect. Uh, but still, you know, it's pretty... pretty cool. Combat isn't the most uh, memorable element of Batman Begins, and I, I allude to as much in the... Uh, podcast. Oh, we got a crazy inmate here. But it's still very competently done, and is far better than combat in some previous Batman games, particularly uh, Dark Tomorrow. I mean, that's going to make, for, just for the record though, Dark Tomorrow is going to make a very interesting episode of this show when it's ultimately explored. Okay, so now we have a lock to pick. Not an option at every door you don't have access to, but kind of nice to have the ability to do it. In fact, I wish you could do that in the Arkham games. <laughs> yes, it's going to make a very interesting episode, I promise you. So we're moving on to another portion of the, of the level here. And 
it looks like we've got some armed people. So, I mean, as you can see, just by just by playing it right now, it's a pretty immersive Batman experience. Well, I remember having a lot of trouble with this part when I was a kid and first playing this game. Well, we get it Let's see if I can do better as a man. I don't want to be here when that thing shows up. You know, you, so you, you're sneaking around, and you are being Batman. And again, you know, this has to be appreciated in the context in which the game was released. Uh, because there were some other good Batman games, but were they as well-rounded as this one? I don't really think so. I mean, uh, you know, we'll get to other well-regarded Batman games from this era, like uh, Vengeance that was released four years before, and based on the, uh, on the animated series. That was a that was a good solid game as well, but I mean it's kind of uh, in many ways it helped lead to this one. Yeah, and you're absolutely right, Ryan. You know Eurocom is a very solid developer, uh, and we talk about that in the in the podcast. Oh. So yeah, if you if you get on the ground, you can do a ground attack. We'll try and get this guy to drop his uh, crowbar, all right. Now I'm just kind of toying with him. See, he's done. And if I want to, I can use a gadget in the middle of a fight, but I don't think I really need to at this point. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna save that for a fight down the line. All right, so that's cleared out. So let's head on a little deeper into the asylum. Try and get around and find Dr. Thomas. There she is, Dr. Thomas. Now, one of the things that you might not know, here, I'll let this play out a little bit. Dr. Thomas is actually voiced by Emma Thomas, who is the Alfred, wife of Christopher Nolan. Kind of cool that she, she has information on got to play at least a little right. bit of a part in the game. And I'll lead you to locate the brain surgery theater on my radar. That's where they're keeping her. Now the elevator part here, let's try and get this going. Oh, whoops. That'll happen. We're live. Got to make some mistakes here. So, I mean, again, just look around the environments. And, you know, the character models, too. Like, in, in Batman's case, I can, I'm not really sure if I can get a good... Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, nicely representative of the costume. And, again, you know, as a 17-year-old, when the, the movie in this game came out... I wanted a good look at everything. I wanted to see what this world was all about. And this game provided me a wonderful opportunity to do just that. So peppered around these levels are military crates that have gadgets in them. In that case, there were a couple flashbangs that were in that one. So I'm going to head out here. And you know, this, this is another element of... Uh, of Batman Begins that isn't quite as much of an emphasis in other Batman games or even the Arkham games and that's platforming. Um, there were some elements but Batman's agility is kind of on prominent display here. Not that there aren't platforming elements in the Arkham games or that there weren't platforming elements in uh, a game like Vengeance or in the 2D games of course. So this is one of the elements here coming up where fear is going to be a primary factor. And that's the prime innovation that I think Batman Begins as a video game made, is, uh, is fear. So 
So we're... I'll let him explain it. We're running into more tech difficulties. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know why this thing is behaving this way. It was it was running perfect yesterday when I was doing a tech test. But of course it doesn't want to run well today. Let me try and fix that. Oh boy, how are you doing? And you can you can chat. You can chat. I I'd be happy to talk with any of you if you want to engage me in a conversation okay now it seems to be working again sorry about that I don't know why why it's doing that but hey what are you gonna do right so we'll continue on so one of the things that uh, like I was alluding to earlier fear is a prime component of Batman Begins and so I'm gonna throw this batarang and spark this gas and hopefully scare enough of the crap out of them that they're gonna drop their guns and I can swoop in and beat them down. Looks like we've got one gunner. Oh, gotta get him, gotta get him before he shoots me to death. He still hasn't dropped it. Stay back, All right. Good enough. I ain't scared of you. You don't want to mess with me. Don't want to mess with, but they just like cower in fear away from you. It's pretty great. Now, I mean, the Arkham games combat is probably one of the most innovative aspects of those games in particular. But I mean, the combat in Batman Begins it's a lot more simplistic by comparison, but still pretty satisfying, especially because you can do vault attacks, you can jump over them, do the kicks, and uh, the finishing moves are fun. So let's, uh, looks like the coast is clear. So let's keep going, try to find Dr. Thomas. And let's monkey up here. See here, here you can really see the monkeying. You know he is the, the way he swings his arms like that as he walks up or as he climbs up the, the fence is kind of uh, kind of great. He's not quite as much of a monkey in the Arkham games, but maybe a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, so and the, the grapple, too, as you can see, is, is an element of this game. Not nearly as pronounced as it would become in the Arkham games, but still uh, still pretty important. So let's throw this battering and bring out the armed guy. It's kind of nice how it intersperses what looks like security camera footage, so you can have a better context to what's going on. Well, let's finish him. Silent takedown. Of course, a staple of the Arkham games from uh, from a vantage point. And there she is. So let's see what she has to say. I'm here to help. Where's Crane? They put him wait for help. Where you are is as safe as you'll get. So 
Sorry, doctor. So one of the other things that I find interesting about this, you know, the, uh, oh, she's, she shouldn't have done that. You know, people often criticize Christian Bale's voice as Batman. And, you know, that, that's fine. I mean, I can respect that it's not everyone's cup of tea. Alfred, what's my current position in relation to Arkham's power grid? Almost directly atop it, sir. Might I ask what you're planning? I'm going to crack open that water tower. Use it to short out the power. Excellent idea, sir. Locate room 45 on my radar. The men at the front gates were talking about storing explosives. Right away, Master Bruce. Let no man underestimate your appetite for destruction. <laughs> well, let's move this over here. A grapple point, sir. A bit of insurance. I'm not taking the long way up here twice. So, when, when Bale is performing as Batman... He uses an overall different inflection when he's talking to people that he doesn't already know. He's using a little bit more of a just dark... He has a, uh, a, a pretty reasonable conception of how Batman should sound. And that's on full display in this game. And that's something that uh, I think is, is appreciated. Let's drop down here. Got a crate here. Flashbang. And again, you know, better to have a med pack than I guess I really didn't need it that time, but we'll take this. Are we running into more technical difficulties here? How charming. Yeah, we really are. All right, one second. Sorry about this. I mean, I don't know what the issue is. I'll probably have to uh, check with my PC video card driver and see if that is causing some sort of compatibility issue. being very wonky charming sorry about this this is gonna happen I guess um, even though it didn't happen at all the other day might have to change my broadcasting software as well. I hope not, but you never know. It's being so temperamental. I apologize about this. I'm going to have to, uh, to figure something out here. But anyway, um, you know, the podcast was actually supposed to be released um, after the uh, after I was going to be finished with the broadcast. But it is available now. So if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to subscribe to it on iTunes, you should be able to download it that way. Or you can uh, subscribe to it on Podbean and listen in to the conversation that Sean and I have about this game that I'm trying to show you and failing at. Alright, so what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to stop the stream for a second. I 